news out of the uh, the resources sector as well, which has come through today, reports that China's state-owned chemical maker Sinochem is looking to team up with Singapore's state investment company Temasek. And the idea is to make a play for potash. The move comes as Chinese companies weigh up their options to rival BHP's $39 billion hostile bid for the company. And although that takeover target rejected the bid last month, a competing bid led by China could prove unwelcome to the Canadian province, which holds the world's biggest reserves of potash. Talks between Sinochem and Temasek have only just begun, but it's likely there might be some sort of decision within a fortnight. Word of Sinochem's approach to Temasek follows reports Sinochem hired HB HSBC to advise it on its options about the takeover tilt. BHP at $37.94, which is down 1.3%. Are we suggesting with all of this that BHP might have to raise its bid for potash? I think so, and, and it certainly appears that way. China, it, it makes sense. Why wouldn't China start having, some of these developing countries start having a look at, at a bid for potash share? We know that they're long cash. We know the synergies are there in terms of the demand for the food and, and the fertiliser. Um, so, look, I think that there, there are some good synergies there. Uh, look, BHP, there's talk of might to increase a bid to, you know, to 150 a share to be on the table there. And, and, and that also, there's a dichotomy now in terms of the, that uh, the shareholders are now saying, well, you know what, you know, the, what about a, a, some, some capital management there in terms of, you know, a shareholder, buy, you know, a share buyback, a, a special dividend, um, looking at, at investing in their current, you know, projects. So, they are finding some headwinds coming in from their, uh, from their, their, their shareholders at the moment too, mm -hmm. which is certainly going to, uh, to hamper uh, possibilities of a, of a further bid mm -hmm. there. They're looking at uh, nearly 20 times earnings or EBITDA um, uh, offer at the moment. So it is also looking relatively expensive. All right. Let's go into some of the other news as well. Eldorado's... Uh, oh. um, our couple of bits of resources news to come out of the, uh, the sector today. Yeah, um, we've also I've seen a couple of reports around about Rio Tinto agreeing with Japanese steelmakers to reduce their, their iron ore price for the October to December period by about 13% from the previous quarter. This has been coming out of Japan. Yes. So obviously iron ore prices and commodity prices generally, I think, and maybe an area of uncertainty for, for yeah, investors at the moment. There could be certainly the, the iron ores, you know, and, and the steel prices have been in, in, in the spotlight yeah. there. You know, Fortescue uh, again. That, that's a company which was, was flagged as having some, uh, you know, a negative impact if the Labor Party got in, and that was certainly. So there has been a lot of uncertainty mm. um, a, a, around the sector, and certainly the iron ore, uh, you know, price now the, the being being reduced sort of falls in line perhaps with this cooling Chinese story. Um, I remember, remember, I think Vale came out saying that Q4 this year, should, there should actually be a bit of an increase there. So yeah. it's interesting to see what, uh, what's going on there. But, but certainly there has been some move away from these riskier commodities plays, you know, and, and that's why we've seen someone like gold uh, you know, moving up strongly as well as the bond market. So look, it, it's been a natural progression away from, uh, from some of these commodity plays yeah. as well. So do you think you're seeing seeing value in those gold stocks? I, I think, no, I think it's, it, it, some of these gold stocks are, are trading pretty high models. I think okay. it's sort of like, like a Newcrest at 32 or 31 times um, PE. I think that the, 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 the gold sector is certainly uh, a, a place which, which, which must remain in interest. Gold at record highs, um, there are people looking at it's extremely toppy uh, at, at these at 1260, yeah. but at the same time, what in the near term is going to be a catalyst for, for uh, the ongoing stability and confidence to return to the market? Mm. So again, it's this tug of war we're seeing across many sectors saying it's gold at 1260 overpriced is, is, is Newcrest at a P of 31 times too expensive um, and, and we have to look at that in El Dorado I think made the right decision there um, you know not getting into a bidding war yeah. to overpay and, and I think again th that falls back to our BP story uh, sorry BHP, BHP story BHP. saying you know yeah. uh, the, the, it gets to a certain level it's like like you know at any auction you at a, at a house auction yeah. you have your limit and that's where you have to pull out and um, you know, Eldorado made the right call there, and, and it's going to be interesting to see where, where BHP turn to uh, you know, draw a line in the sand. Yeah, they draw the line. Good mm. stuff. Al, we'll take another break. This is Lunch Money. Welcome back to Lunch Money. We're joined this hour by Al Fullerton from Allium Financial Markets. Let's mention the Australian share market at lunchtime here. The S&P A6200 down by 27 points, which is about a 0.6% decline and a 0.6% loss also for the All Lords. On the blue chip stocks, BHP is down one and a quarter percent. Look at Bramble Steady at $5.94, Commonwealth Bank down by 1.2%. Here you're seeing Foster's Group up 30 cents, which is still a 4.8% rise. You're looking at uh, also Qantas gaining a cent at $2.54. QBE 11 cents weaker at $17.56. Rio Tinto a one and a quarter percent decline to $73.42. Telstra still up three cents, 288. West Farmers up four cents at 33.37. That's about a 0.1% rise and a 0.1% gain also for Woolworths at 29.04.
Now, Foster's has knocked back a bid for the assets of its Treasury Wine Estates business, the division which houses its wine brands. The bid came from an international private equity firm, a cash offer of between $2.3 and $2.7 billion. But Foster's says the bid significantly undervalues the assets, which it plans to demerge from its beer unit. Foster's maintains that the spin-off is the best option for shareholders, especially given the fact that the wine transformation plan is beginning to bear fruit. The board does, however, say it would consider any proposal if it is in the best interests of shareholders. There's the shares again, up 30 cents at 6.37. Al from Allium Financial Markets. Um, there's an issue there about whether the demerger is in the best interest of shareholders, yes. I suppose. I guess the price might determine whether I think there's, so. uh, there's a better option there. Well, it seems to be the right thing to do, knock back your first your first offer anyway, BHB Potash, so that, that happened, we've seen it on numerous occasions there. So, mm. um, you know, again, we don't know who the, who the private equity player was, where they're from. Um, you know, we've seen, obviously, the, the, the discussions with the Napa Valley for their wine business there. We've seen rumours a couple of weeks ago of, uh, of Saab Miller coming in for the beer division. So it's been a very uh, a choppy month for the, uh, for the stock. You know, it's a real iconic Australian stock. You know, it's held a number of super funds. It's, it's been badly managed. It's been, it's been yeah. a, a pretty bad run for, for the stock. And so you, you might sort of start seeing now that we're coming to, there's a glimmer of hope, maybe perhaps peering around Foster's, that, that um, you know, over the coming months, it may actually uh, end up, I suppose, cutting down to its core assets and, 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 and moving forward be a, be a stock that, that, that perhaps is, uh, is relatively profitable. Is, you, is this a stock, though, that you would put money... When you say glimmer of hope, do you put money on a stock which just has a bit of a glimmer of hope? Yeah, look, I, 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 I have, have uh, any of my clients that no, I, I, mm. I, don't, uh, I, don't, I don't touch the sort of fossils. It was once looked at as a um, somewhat of a defensive play, in th yeah. th those sort of stocks, and, and, and that hasn't really been proven right. The wine business, it seems, uh, time in and time out, it's been an extremely tough place to manage mm. for, for listed company. The beer divisions uh, tend to... Have, have gone well, but but you know it it's it, it certainly is a, it's a tough se sector really to be in, and uh, and there are a lot of variables that we've seen in terms of even uh, the agricultural and wheat and, and and hops and barley pricing and whatnot. So um, I, I find it one that I, I tend to stay clear of, and, and fossils I think we're better off to wait and see a bit more mm -hmm. a bit more uh, you know information, a bit more clarity around the stock before I'd, I'd make a decision on on whether it's uh, it, it looks attractive. Mm. And you said you're you're cautious on the whole sector. So what kind of stocks are you excluding from? Um, portfolios, for example, oh, on that I, kind of basis. I suppose in, in terms of, of the, the alcohol stocks there that we're looking at, I, I don't really touch the, you know, the McGuigan's wines and whatnot. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't, the, the South Corp it, it muddled on for a long time. Mm. I, I, I think that if you're looking at you want to play that side, perhaps you, know, you play your Woolworths or your West Farmers who have, who have exposure to the bottle shops and, and, and perhaps the, the more the end product mm. there. And, and I think that's, good, that's a far better play if you do want to look at that, uh, those consumer type stocks. So uh, yeah, Wessies, Woolworths, they'd certainly be the, the two I'd look at. Good stuff. All right, well, Standard & Poor's